What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, DC has been in the news quite a bit lately. Um, one of the more exciting news, I wish we thought, Brian, was going to happen, was uh, Amazon picked up another season of Batman the Cape Crusader. Um... Also, we just got finished with. Uh, are they still in the middle of CinemaCon or, or are they done with it? Uh, I believe it's still going on, but mm -hmm. the DC portion has completed. Okay, so we got a lot of uh, excitement coming out of uh, the Flash screening, Brian. And it look, uh, listen, despite what I've said before seeing anything of the Flash. Uh, movie I didn't have high hopes for it because of what was going on with Ezra Miller also because I didn't like his portrayal as um, Barry Allen and most people I think didn't really like his portrayal but yet Andy Muschietti has created a film that is getting a lot of buzz brian from all over people say the same thing some people are saying oh it's not that great but it's, it's still good but it's not what everybody's whatever everybody's saying that it's good brian your thoughts on the flash situation yeah let's talk flash because i feel like you know we've spent most of the most of the discussion we've had around this picture has really been around ezra miller's situation and kind of like what would happen to the picture we haven't spent as much time on what's in the movie itself like yeah. what we, we know we know the general specs it is a reset of the Snyderverse to then set up a go forward in the DCU yeah. I think with this the trailer that just came out and then obviously at the full screening of the movie at CinemaCon we now have some real clues as to how that's going to be achieved and what they're focusing on so there are five films that this movie has been compared to wow. so here is the roster for those of you scoring at home 1978 Richard Donner Superman 1989 Tim Burton Batman 2008's The Dark Knight by Christopher Nolan Spider-Man No Way Home and Back to the Future listen man that's the Hall of Fame like what, yeah. if this movie is even like half of those movies they probably have a billion dollar property that, that could be in waiting regardless of the Ezra Miller situation if it is in that class then we're talking about something that's going to be timeless which seems inconceivable, but look at the movies on that list. I literally, there was literally somebody that was like, yeah, it was like Back to the Future and No Way Home. Like if you put them together, they, we will get this. Put them together. Wow. Like, there's like a $2 billion movie and, and one of the best movies of the 1980s, like an all-time classic yeah. put together. Like that's what people are saying now that they've seen the entire film. Yeah. The Warner Brothers, it would seem, when we heard about this, we were like, man, they must be confident. And it would seem that their confidence is not off the mark. Well, yeah. Now, I find it hard to believe it can live up to that kind of hype. Yeah. But as you say, nobody's really had a bad word to say about it. Yeah. And that's saying something considering the troubles with the star, I think would have made people more apt to criticize if they could going in. And they're not. They yeah. they saw. Tracy, I had, I had news. Shout out to him. He said, that's a billion dollars guaranteed, I think. That's a billion dollars right there. And it's and it looks like it may be so, Brian, depending on also if when, the, when we get the Rotten Tomatoes reviews, everybody just looks at that to see if the hype is real, right? Um, do you think this movie hits a billion dollars? I still think it. I think it can. Mm -hmm. I certainly think with the hype that's building, I think the fact that I think the trailers have been good. We'll talk about the content. I think they've gonna they've done a good job here of getting you know they've given you they've given you enough to get excited about. I think the movie looks good. Mm -hmm. I think there's interesting story they're teasing. So I think they and they're they're handling Ezra Miller properly, which is he's they're nowhere <laughs> in public, and even in the trailers like they're almost as much seen rather than heard, right? There's much more of an emphasis on Michael Keaton, which I think is the smart way to play this. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I think they got into play. It is a very crowded calendar. That's the biggest thing working against them is like they don't have the Super Mario like three, four weeks to themselves. Like mm-hmm. if this movie comes out smack in the middle of summer, you know, Mission Impossible, Oppenheimer, these movies are Ooh. not that far behind. Like there's a lot this thing is going to go up against. Yeah. So it has to be like really good. But I do think like mm-hmm. if the key to this movie to me is if it's at 90 90- three percent fresh on rotten tomatoes and everyone's saying you got to see this yes. it's that opening weekend yeah. right that one weekend is going to rule the box office and if that one weekend is like hey 250 opening weekend us 600 global because it got to china like if it's like that then obviously it locks the billion i think we're gonna it's really riding on that first weekend being enormous because the competition will start to bleed it out in, in the weeks after yeah they got ezra miller like uh supergirl in the movie locked away we haven't talked about how they were going to pull this reset off mm-hmm. and i think the second trailer really shows you the tack they're taking and i would love to hear your take on it which is they are really retconning man of steel that's what yes. it looks like is happening right michael shannon has a real part in this movie yes. like i thought he was just cameoing mm-hmm. as part of some multiversal like hey look where we've been yes uh-uh he came out and said before he signed to take the role he called oh. Zack Snyder for permission to replay the character the way he was being asked. So, and if you look at this action sequences, you see shots that look very similar to some of the combat, like yes. in the Smallville battle, in the Metropolis battle, except now you have Supergirl and Michael Keaton, Batman, mm-hmm. and Barry Allen in the spots where Henry Cavill was mm-hmm. in some of those fights. And mm-hmm. so, what is your what is your reaction to this idea that we are actually going to lean into Man of Steel, replay some of the hits there to then kind of lean out on the way out? Because I don't know that I expected them to go that far in that direction. It just speaks to Brian something I've said before. And it is, it'll be interesting to see the different perspective of a different director at the in the director's chair calling the shots seeing a different vision of what these characters or how these characters should be portrayed that's what's unique to me about it brian to see how different and perhaps how much better this could be so i noted this in the trailer and people have made comments about how the how the action sequences look and they're like whoa wait this looks like zack snyder i'm like yeah that's the point Mm -hmm. like if you're going to retell a story that zack snyder originated what's interesting to me in this trailer is you are clearly seeing like he is paying homage to the visual style that Mm -hmm. zack developed Mm -hmm. in man of steel which i thought was actually quite good in a lot of places but it is a little distinct like there are definitely sequences where you're watching like keaton and supergirl where as i always say zach sometimes is his own worst enemy and he makes th- like, things get too crowded there's too much going on there's a cleanliness to some yes. of these shots where like you can focus on like batman or you can focus on supergirl you can see the like different angle but it's like snyder inspired yeah i think it works pretty well like even supergirl which i was pretty skeptical mm-hmm. um Sasha Kaye kind of playing it almost like it almost reminds this may be sacrilegious almost reminds me of like Kristen Stewart from like a little bit like just kind of brooding teenager like like I don't know I it kind of it worked it weirdly worked for me in the context of what she was doing at least in the trailer yeah. where I was like I was kind of not caring that much about this portrayal and now I'm like at least interested well think about where she's it. been and that's why I, I it, it seems appropriate yeah yeah. yeah exactly so and it made me wonder like i had kind of written her off as having any chance to be the supergirl in the james gunn dcu and then i saw how they're originating her in this movie and i was like you know yeah. that kind of supergirl actually fits a little better at least attitude wise with the one that is in the comic they're basing their supergirl movie on so then i was like maybe there is a chance they're thinking about sasha kaye as their future supergirls i don't know it just it's just kind of one of those things that at least got got me thinking but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I have to say like, you know, problems and controversy aside, like they're the promotion and the hype. There's definitely made me more excited to see what this is all about. Yeah. It'll be interesting at the end to see at the end of that movie, what's where, where her super girl character will end up, you know, cause that'll be very interesting. 
By the way, there's a rumor because this goes back to another thing that we were trying to figure out. There is another rumor going around about another Batman um, being involved at the end of this movie because of the multiverse. So the rumor is that somehow Ezra Miller or some form of Barry Allen does in fact end up in the Joel Schumacher universe with George Clooney. That's the rumor. As like a fade to black. There's some sort of like he travels to that universe. That's going around. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I read that. Um, what else is going on? Is there anything else for, with the Yeah, DC? well, I would say what's interesting is like, you know, <laughs> Tough beat for Aquaman too, man. Like, like they oh, show yeah. this whole movie. Everyone's writing that like this thing is like the greatest, super, one of the greatest superhero movies like ever made. And then there's Aquaman showing 20 minutes, and I read about like what's in the 20 minutes, and I'm like, nobody's gonna care about this. Oh <laughs> my god, what what was said about it? So, the shots that were described were kind of like, um, Jason Momoa has a son, like a young ah, son. Yes, I had to hear that. Um, teaming up, no surprise, with Ocean Master to fight Black Manta. Um, they said actually in the 20 minutes that Amber Heard was surprisingly visible as part of the 20 minutes. But like you listen to what's described, and it's just like it just kind of sounds like more of the same, but we've kind of changed the chess pieces, right? Mm -hmm. And like it's the same sort of concept. So I don't. And we obviously heard Jason Momoa tell us there's more comedy in this. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I just. I'm still out. <laughs> I am still not out. going. I'm going to be at Freddy's house watching it bootleg. <laughs> That's what I'll be doing. <laughs> be the solo pod for me. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know in the comment section below if you care about Aquaman. Uh, are you going to be seeing the Flash? Uh, the Flashpoint movie? Um, what else did we discuss regarding DC? Amazon starting to build a little little Batman universe over there. It's all animated so far, but it's it's exactly what we expect. Yeah, yeah. It's, come on. The anticipation for that is 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 certainly huge, Brian. Um, I can't wait for it for when that comes out. I hope it's a lot of episodes. Uh, that's something. That I think you they know. said it's. I think they said it's twelve per season. Okay. I think they said it's two seasons, 24 episodes is what, what I what I saw. And then they added two more kind of Bat Family series. Uh, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Like different yeah. ages. Yeah, like yeah. One younger, one a little bit older. So, yeah, they're start, starting to do exactly what we thought. Let me ask you this, Brian, before we wrap this one up. 12 episodes compared to what we used to get with the Batman the Animated Series, which was <laughs> what? Oh, man. In a season? It'd be like 50. Okay. Because it would be like one a week for like a year. Yeah. That's what they used to do. Yeah. Or yeah, they would, and then they would rerun it daily. You know. When you come so out. what I, I would assume, Brian, that these twelve episodes would will will be connected quite a bit. So that's the big question: Is this a serial cartoon, or is this what you know? Because the animated series was like you had a couple multi-parters, but they a lot of times they were just standalone episodes. Yeah. So that I don't know. I think that's a good question. That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. Um, remember, hit that like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and comment in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.